The video I want to talk about today is really about Waves plugins, the issues are surrounding the update plan. If you don't know what the how the update plan works, this video might give you a bit of insight and also looking into how I actually install my plugins with Waves and how I kind of work around the systems that they've got in place. What you'll intend to see now with Waves is they'll offer individual plugins at like a, you know like a really cheap price. And then normally you might see things there's always an offer for a plugin at like $29. In general, like I've never had an issue with regards to compatibility or things not working in the system. So they're always worth having. It's just knowing how to play obviously with the systems. And I know a lot of people have had issues in the past with regards to the update plans. Some of the plugins that I'm gonna be probably be using on most sessions will be Vocal Rider, Bass Rider, Vitamin I find really useful in terms of bringing out some of the harmonic content and some of the higher frequencies and areas. And Sibilance at the moment is the DS I'm using quite often. Some of those I picked up for sale, some of those I've actually had for free. With, with regards to the update plan, this is kind of at loggerheads or like in contrast to other plugin companies with the likes of Plugin Alliance, Softube, maybe Slate, and also the likes of Sound Toys. If you buy a plugin, they'll normally actually issue uh, any software updates and releases to that plugin will be included in your purchase of the plugin. Because Waves are actually offering their plugins at a cheaper rate, what they're saying is you actually get support for one single year. After that, you're actually limited to that version of the plugin. And if you want to have it updated to the latest operating system in the future, you might need to pay for an update to make that more compatible. Obviously, this might actually come out more of an issue, obviously, with like new releases, Macintosh systems, and there could be issues in the future with regards to compatibility there. On my account, I've got a lot of V9 and V10 plugins, which are all out of date. And if I wanted them updated to the latest versions, it's going to cost me $240 to do that. They've got a cap on how much the updates will cost here. I'm not going to spend that. I, I've got the plugins and they're working fine on my system. I don't see the need to pay $240 for no, you know, functional improvement in terms of sound. One of the things that they have said is if there are any bundles that I own, if there be any plugins that have been added to the specific bundles, they'll actually get included in the price update. So that's one area that might be helpful. With version 12, the other thing that the Waves have brought in is where they offer more than one license to the license holder. It could be useful to have transfer licenses in the cloud. I could have them both set up on both systems and not have to worry about it. They've also included this possibility of being able to resize your plugins. Now, again, for $240 for the plugins I own, I'm not that worried about it. Now for my screen, I'm not on a 4K monitor and I haven't got a huge screen. So my plugins are actually all right. And I'm still using the old school Renaissance version of the plugin. Obviously with V12, they've updated the GUI on that. And again, it looks nice, but in terms of sound, it's not really that much different. So I'm not gonna be really worrying too much about that. Updating at this moment for me is that it's not really a deal breaker. So I'm not really gonna do it. Problem that I've heard when talking to other people about it and where it kind of gets a bit confusing is when we're looking at say like installing the plugins that that we've bought onto new systems. So with the different versions of Wave Central, which is how they actually install all the software now, you can install like the latest versions of the plugins. And that might mean that if you've got like version nine or version 10 plugins, they won't be available to install on these new update versions. So there's a few workarounds that we have to do. And Waves don't always make it kind of obvious because they'd rather you pay for the update for the plugins that you've already bought. And it could be like say $20 on top. And if you have to do that every year, there might be an option for like looking at alternative plugin companies to do that. All I want to look at in the next section now is like the workarounds and what I'm using at the moment and how I get around this. When you log in, if you go on upgrades, there's a couple of options. So if you were looking to buy a few more plugins from Waves, this could be an option or a way around updating like the plugins, getting to the latest version and also getting some more um, usability out of some new plugins that you may not have. So if you're generally interested in like Gold or Horizon, there might be an option upgrade path there that could help you with that. With the licensing cloud, the, one of the ways you can actually do it is you can authorize the license onto your system drive. Now with system drives, if there is an issue in regards to like, say you take that hard drive out of your system, to like an external studio. What you need to do with that situation, you need to actually put your licenses in Wave Central back into the cloud before you move the drive because it won't get recognized in a new computer because although it's on the same hard drive, the system ID will be different and the MAC addresses are slightly different. And so then it will mean that license keys aren't quite working until you take the system back. So to work around it, you have to go back to your original computer, unload the licenses into the cloud and re-download them onto the system. It's a bit of a pain, but it's a workaround. One of the other things as well is like, say you forget to do it from the other side. Say you've been at a studio for like a week, two weeks, a month, and then you're leaving that studio and you're going home. If you forget to unload the licenses from there, you either have to go back to the studio and arrange a time when it's convenient for them to put the licenses back in the cloud, or you have to actually try and say you've lost this license or these keys and you need to get them restored. And I think Waves give you one option per year 
um, to actually do that before you have to pay, which is actually better than the iLike license recovery thing because obviously you've got to have like zero downtime. The other way of actually doing it is I install them onto an external USB stick. What I do is I have all my license keys on the removable USB stick. I can remove that drive from the system, take it onto my laptop at home, which I'm recording from at the moment, and I have no issues whatsoever. If I buy a new plugin from Waze, what I'll also do is I'll also download an offline installer onto my USB drive. Uh, it just saves me like this hassle of having to go through the, the offline installers trying to find the license and not being able to install plugins that I own. I literally go into Waves, I go onto the tab on the left hand side and it just says offline installer and you can go install from offline installer and then I'll select my USB stick and then click on that and that actually reinstall plugins for me. If I, when I look at actually updating my Mac eventually, which I've probably got like another year on it, um, I'll have to be doing that and actually doing the, running the offline installer, creating it and then going from there. The other option is well, if you find yourself in a position where you haven't got the Waves installer or offline installers on a, hard, a USB stick that which you carry around with you, you can actually download a link to previous versions of the Waves installers. What I'll do is I'll leave the links in the download um, in the descriptions below. And that's why I always recommend if you can, um, just installing the plugin onto the USB stick that you carry around with your licenses. So if you do move to another studio, your licenses are ready to go in and to install. With those like big installers from Waves, one of the things I'd recommend is running the system disconnected to the internet because it might ask to look for an update, which will then take you to version 12, which is what you don't want. As it stands, I'm not a huge fan of the update plan. I have no intention of paying $240, so I'm, I'm going to stick with what I'm where I'm at. I'm on Mojave. I'm not on Big Sur for my Mac system for recording. And let me know your thoughts, what you think. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, give you leave me a like in the comments. What plugins are you using? Let me know and I'll speak to you guys all soon. Ta-ra!